everybody, welcome to Stunks Music. My name's Ollie, and today we're going to be having a look at utility in this deep dive session. Let's go! Right, so here we are back in the Ableton manual. Let's see what they've got to say about utility. Utility can perform some very useful tasks, especially in combination with other devices. There are two separate phase controls, one for each input, left and right, as their names imply, they invert the phase of each channel. The channel mode chooser allows selective processing of the left and right channels for a sample. If, for example, left is selected, the right channel is ignored, and the left channel appears on both outputs. This is especially useful if you have a stereo file that contains different information on both channels, and you want to use only one. The width control sets the stereo width of the wet signal. 0% yields a mono signal, whereas values above 100% create a widened stereo panorama. Choosing mid-side mode from the width control, right-click PC, control-click Mac, allows you to toggle between width and mid-side balance controls. The mid-side balance control acts as a continuous mono to stereo controller when set from 0 to 100M. Setting the parameter to 100M will sum the audio to mono. Values between 0 and 100S emphasize the stereo or out-of-phase components of a signal. At 100S, only the side signal will be heard. The left and right channels will be 180 degrees out of phase with each other. Note that if either left or right have been chosen in the channel mode chooser, the width and mid-side balance controls have no function and are therefore disabled. When the mono switch is enabled, stereo input is converted to mono. The base mono switch converts the low frequencies of the input signal to mono. This is useful for avoiding coloration of low frequencies when they are replayed in mono. You can use the base mono frequency slider to adjust the cutoff frequency between 50 and 500 Hz. When base mono audition is enabled, only the low frequencies can be heard. This can be useful for tuning the base mono frequency. The gain control adjusts the level of the input signal from minus infinite dB to plus 35 dB. This can be particularly useful for automating volume fades on a track while freeing up that track's volume control for mix balancing. Note when adjusting the gain parameter between minus 18 and plus 35 dB using the up down arrow keys, the value increases or decreases in one decibel increments. However, between minus 18 and minus infinite, the value smoothly accelerates. The balance control pans the signal anywhere in the stereo field. The mute button simply silences the incoming signal when enabled. Note that active mute controls of a track are always placed at the very end of the signal chain. However, since you can place utility anywhere on the signal chain, you can use its mute function to cut the input of a delay line or reverb without turning off the input of these devices. The DC switch filters out DC offsets and extremely low frequencies that are far below the audible range. It will only have a sonic effect if a signal contains these frequencies and is processed after utility with non-linear effects such as compressors or wave shapers. Right, that's pretty much it for utility. Let's jump into Ableton and see what we can do. Right, here we are back in Ableton. Let's have a look at what we can do with utility. So, starting off with my master channel, I have this set to my default template. Utility, base mono at 120 hertz, and that usually gets changed a little bit depending on the end of the final mix. And this little DC ticked, so that just gets rid of any of those low frequencies. The track might not have it, but there's no harm in having that one ticked. I'm going to turn this off now so it's not interfering with the rest of what we're doing, but that one really helped me just tidy up my masters a good bit at the end. So we'll start off up here with this big spacey re-space that I've made. Let's have a little listen. It's a nice big old bass. If you have a look at span though, the correlation meter is not looking too happy. And that's because the nature of this kind of sound is a big out of phase, phasey sound. So you can see that correlation meter there going the wrong way. So one of the good ways we can tidy this one up is with the bass mono. So if we click this little headphone icon down here, we can audition just the bass and really hear what's going on. So let's take that right up to 500 first and we can have a look at span two. Probably somewhere around 200 sounds good. There's not too much of those distortions. You want those distortions to be on the sides a bit where possible. Maybe 173 we'll get away with. 
So if you listen to the difference now, we can have a look at the correlation meter. Just honing in that low end should help just tighten up that sound a good bit. And quick with and without. So one of the things that's kind of deceiving, when you turn utility off, it might sound, oh, that's much fatter and much wider, but really you do need those mono signals in there down the middle. So this is a really good one just to help tighten up those bases. And again, we're doing it at the end, but it's really nice just to kind of keep on top of that as you're making sounds. Next up, I have this little rack I use just to help do a bit of different processing on the mid and the side. So I've just made a little plonky sound here with a big old ping pong delay on it. And that ping pong is going to be giving us a lot of that side information. So here what we've got is our mid side splitter. So in the mids, I've got utility. Right click to get to mid side mode and set that 100% to mono. So our mid signal, which is. And then our side, we've got set mid side mode all the way to side signal. If I turn this reverb off, that gives us this. We've got our mid and our side. So now you can do some processing on just the side. So we could put a big reverb on the side so we're not cluttering up that mid signal. Have a listen now. So that'll be. Then together. Or if you wanted to go and do something a lot crazier so you can hear it properly, you could grab a phaser or something onto the sides. hear the so that gives you a lot more control you can do this with the mid side EQ I just kind of like to have that split and then I can make big racks on just affecting the side of the spectrum and other things just affecting the middle next one I want to have a look at is actually fixing phase issues so what I've done here is I've bounced out a sine wave and I've flipped the phase and this can happen all the time when you're making tracks if we look here you can see as one is going down other one is going up and what this causes is a complete deterioration of the sound so if we have a listen you won't be able to hear much at all it's all been phase cancelled out so what we can do is we can chuck a utility onto one of them and we can flip the left flip the right and now we've flipped the entire phase of both channels we should be able to get our sound back there we go so that is really obvious with just a sine wave but this can be happening within your sounds so sometimes if you might notice it on span you might see the correlation meters doing something weird over here or you might notice that a sound you just can't hear it properly there's a chance you've got phasing issues next up we've got left right balance so this happens quite a lot i've done this one on purpose i've turned down my left channel by 15 db it can happen a lot when you're stacking effects you can end up kind of losing your balance in the sound so if you've ever listened to this sound we've got <laughs> And that doesn't sound too bad, but when you start really honing in and looking at it, we can see over here. That's not balanced. It's leaning over to the right. So what we can do with our utility, we can get our balance and just slowly start moving that towards the left to rebalance it back out. That seems to work. 15, 16, and actually that's a much more balanced signal. Now, like I say, I did this one on purpose, but this can happen if you're using phasers, flanges, and you're throwing those sounds everywhere. You get this imbalance. So that's a real nice one just to hone in on that and fix it. One of the other things that I like to do, this takes a little bit of uh, fiddling around. You might find it easier just to use the sidechain if you want. But using CV inputs, you can actually do volume automation on your sounds using triggered audio, the same way you would with compression. So we've got a CV envelope follower here on this kick drum, which is giving us the signals. And then on our bass, I've just taken our bass from up there, you get a CV in and you can map that to your gain. So now, rather than having compressed side chaining, we essentially have volume automation being written. It takes a while to tweak it, but let's have a little listen. An 
arguably volume automation is a lot cleaner. You're not going to get those pops and clicks. That you get from sidechain compression. Um, it is a little fiddlier to set up and actually get your attack and release times though. So, you know, it's a, a bit of this, a bit of that. I use it more creatively than I do for actual... If I need a sidechain because I can't hear something, I usually go in with a sidechain. But this CVN is quite a fun way to get some experimental sound design. And lastly, we have using it just actually for writing automation, muting, volume control, and stuff like that. So here I've got a big old pad sound. And when I let go of the keys, that's going on for ages which you might like, but in some sections you might not like. So what we can do is we can right click show automation and we can write a mute in. So we can have this build up and as we come up to our drop, we can have the mute turning on here and they'll have none of that overlapping. So even though we've got all of those delays, the echo and the resonators and the grain delay, that can all stop with our mute button here. Likewise, we can do the same with our actual gain as well. So if we were writing that on this automation on our main channel, and we could be doodly do, we'd write whatever we want to write. And then it comes to doing the mix. We're in a bit of a dilemma here now because we need to move all of these down and we're gonna be doing that across the whole track. It just becomes quite a nightmare. So I find automation and doing your volume automation on a utility really can help just uh, make your mixes a lot easier to deal with when it comes to the end of it and you're changing, changing these main volumes here. You can then have your volume automation still running behind it. All right, everyone, that'll do it for this episode of Deep Dive. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about utility. As always, Project files are available down there in the description if you want any of the sounds that we covered in today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these videos, and I'll catch up with you a lot next time. Bye!